First thing I want to talk about, I think the audience would like to know, for you and Tristan, 92 days in the dungeon, you know, you're in jail, yep. your, your experience in there, we keep hearing about it, we read about it, but what was it like for you guys being in there? So I'll start by saying, and I have to make this clear, that the staff in the jail were exceptionally nice to me. Um, they were very apologetic. The, the vibe was apologetic. Nobody was really treating me like a criminal. There were a few guys who were icy cold, I guess you could call them. They liked to think of themselves as professional, but they were just inhuman. But over time, they warmed up, and I was exceptionally nice also to all the staff. Jail was terrible. I'm going to start by saying jail was terrible, and I was miserable inside of the jail cell. It's a good thing depression isn't real, because I would have been depressed. But I think in life that you get what you give, and I want to feel happier, so I try my very best to make people happy. So when the old lady would bring me my food, I would sit and say, oh, this is the best food I've ever had. I've never had food this good. Did you cook this? I thought yesterday was the best, but you managed to surpass it again. How'd you do it? What's the magic ingredient? And I ended up making friends with them. Like, like I had grandmas in there, the old ladies cooking the food. And by trying to make people happy and smile all the time, I started to feel a lot happier. But it's kind of scary. And I think the scariest thing about jail was the uncertainty of it. If they would have said to me, you're in jail for 92 days, or even five years, you've got five years, cool, do my time. But when you're nabbed and thrown in a cell without charge, you're like, well, how long, is this my life? Is this it now? Is this the end of the story? I'm just in this cell. And I was picked up on 29th of December. I went through this quick court case. Like I said, I'm inside of the, the jurisdiction of Romania, so I'm very careful of what I say because the case is ongoing and we're in Romania and I can't leave Romania. But obviously Romanian court is in Romanian by law. So you're marched into this room, everyone speaks a language you don't understand for 15 minutes, and then you're marched off to jail. You're like, what even happened? What, what even happened to me? And they said, oh, here's the paper that explains it. I was like, that's in Romanian. And they said, oh, don't worry, you'll get a translation to English by law. I was like, okay, that's fine. But because I was picked up on the 29th of December and there was New Year's Eve and holidays, and it was two weeks before I even knew why I was in jail. Two solid weeks I'm in jail. I, no one told me in English why I'm in jail. I had no idea what the- Can they do that? By law, you get it on the piece of paper in English, but it's translation, it's holiday, we need to find a translator, right. there is a delay. And you speak zero Romanian. Zero. So they said, oh yeah, human trafficking. What, what do you mean human trafficking? Who? When? What? What is, what is this? It took, took two weeks before I finally got a piece of paper and then I realized what garbage it truly was. I mean, I knew it was garbage, but I was like, this is complete garbage. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have endless stories from jail. It was, it was certainly, it, I think I don't think jail teaches you much new. What it does is confirm everything you already know. It confirms everything you know about the reality of the outside world, that you need to be physically strong so that you're not attacked by others and mentally strong so you're not attacked by yourself. You need to, you learn who's on your side and who isn't. You learn who's a coward and who's not. You learn who's an opportunist and who isn't. Your, your circle, you certainly learn a lot about the people around you when you go to a jail cell, that's for sure. But I remember it was New Year's Eve. When I, when I was first picked up on the 29th of December, I was very sure I'd be out to the house. So there's no way they're going to keep me. For, for what? Like, this, this, not, this doesn't make sense. So, finally New Year's Eve rolls around, and uh, I'm sitting in the, in the jail cell by myself. And in Romanian jail, you don't leave the room. It's not like an American jail where there's a yard or anything. You're stuck in the room. It's three by four, and that's your existence. You just stay there. You by yourself. 24 you hours a day. At the beginning, I was by myself. And you're stuck in this room, and I'm sitting there, it's New Year's Eve, and there's a very faint speaker, maybe way down the hallway, the guards must have been having a little party for New Year's Eve. And there's this awful song, it's called, it's called the Ketchup Song. I don't know if you know what it is, I don't want to sing it, but it goes, hey, ha hey, that yeah. super annoying song. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I, I know it's New Year's Eve, because the fireworks start going off. I'm looking out my tiny window, here in the very long distance on the end of the hallway. Hey, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking out the window like, this can't be it. This can't be the end of my life. Even the cockroaches all over the walls didn't suffer. There was maybe, there was maybe 15 cockroaches on the walls, right? And when, when it struck 12 and the fireworks went off, I kind of like, oh, who's my friend in there? the cockroaches? I looked at them, even they didn't. It's funny because before that, a couple days before that, me and Tristan were discussing, do we want to do New Year's in Dubai? Do we want to go Cor Cheval? Shall we go Miami? We're all arguing. Oh, that will be boring. Now that's too far. We had all these grandeur plans. Oh, finally we decided to go to Dubai. 
we were in Czech Republic at the time and we decided to go to Dubai and I said, let's stop in Romania so I can repack the suitcase. So that's jet, it, that's the only reason. That's the only reason. So Jet left Prague, landed in Romania, my jet was still on the run. Came here overnight to pack a suitcase, spent the night, spoke to Greta with Pizza Box, and it's 5 a.m. to go before I flew back to Prague. So that was my day. infamous Greta Pizza Box situation. Greta Pizza Box. How much you think it, there, there's anything linked to Greta? Is there anything, uh, because of timing of it, yeah, I don't think she specifically said that. Of course. Me, but there are certainly people within the Matrix machine that you can't attack without catching flack for. There are certain, there's certainly protected people. It's absolutely not really a club, and you're either in the club or you're outside the club. She's certainly in the club, right? So if, you're, if, you, are, if you say certain things about certain people, or you get a beef with X amount of people, or you discredit a certain person, they're going to try very hard to teach you a lesson for doing that. And you can see very clearly who's in the club and who isn't, by the, the Philip Schofield situation. This is a man who has groomed boys and had sex with them, but he's in the club. All of the media headlines after two days are, let's have compassion, feel sorry for him, uh, his mother's upset. They've attacked me for 14 months, day after day after day, and they relentlessly attack me. Nobody talks about my mental health, nobody gives a shit how I feel. I, did, I didn't do any of the things he did. He's actually done things, I haven't done anything. But when you're in the club, you're protected by the media. When you're not in the club, you're attacked by the media. And that's how it simply works. You're either on our side or you're not. But to join their side, you have to sell your soul. Your sanity has a price. You have to, your sanity is for sale. You have to sell it. You have to come along with your sanity, take out your mind and say, here you go. Take my sanity. I'll take 35 million. Yes, that is a woman. Yes, protect me. It's insane. And the reason these people join these clubs is because they know they're doing bad things and they feel that they need protection. The reason I stand up and argue against all this shit is because I know I have I don't have skeletons in my closet. You think I'd be on the internet talking like I talk and fighting the Matrix if I had skeletons in my closet and I was actually a bad person? I've been investigated as deeply as a person can be investigated by multiple federal agencies for 14 months. I was locked in a jail cell and 2,000 people I know was called. My barber, my old housekeeper from when I lived in England nine years ago, my, my gardener I used to have in another country I lived in. Everybody was called. And people were offered bribes effectively. The media are calling girls saying, if you have a bad story to tell about Andrew, we, we can pay you $30,000 if you have a bad story. That's a bribe. That's a bribe. And they still couldn't find anyone. Still, I've been investigated to a deeper level than 99.9% .9 of people you cross on the street. And they're saying I'm guilty and I'm a bad person? You put, you go get 20 men off the street and put them through what I've been through. You'll find more crimes than you've ever found with me. Absolute clown world. It's insane. And if I was part of the club, none of this would be happening. The media would be on my side. They wouldn't be hitting me this hard. They wouldn't be lying about me. All I had to do was sell my soul and sell my sanity, and I refused. And they're trying to punish me for it. That's what's happening. It's funny you say this. Uh, um, 